Hey guys, Monochrome here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Genuinely good to have you. Today we're taking a look at the Olight i1R2 EOS. Now, let me be very clear. This is not the original. This is the updated version. Also, this is not the pro version. Just want to make that very clear. Now, I've been EDCing this light for several months upon months. Please keep that in mind. It's in black, but if you prefer desert tan, you can definitely get it in that color. Two modes, high and low, high, a rated 150 lumens, low 5 lumens. Runtime on high is going to be 15 minutes. Runtime on low is going to be 6 hours. Now those lumens numbers, keep in mind this is Olight. So those are not out the front numbers, which are a lot more accurate. They are emitter lumens. Let's take a closer look. This is a very small, very short keychain flashlight. Now I do have to say this one inch lobster claw clip does not come with the light. What you get is a short USB cord and you get a small instructional booklet, very small, very thin. It barely qualifies as a booklet. But this excellent one inch lobster claw clip no, you do not get that with the light. I put that on there myself. These can easily be found on eBay. Just type in one inch lobster claw clip into eBay's search function and you should get a good number of results. This clip makes it excellent being able to easily clip and unclip this light on my house keys. And even though it does add length, this is still a very short flashlight. So it's not as though it's going to be an issue. What you do get is this split ring already attached to the post on top of the flashlight. So you do get that. And it is quite a decent size. I did not have any issues attaching the lobster claw clip to the split ring. As you can see close up, that split ring is not buggered up. It's not damaged. And this lobster claw clip is surprisingly thick. So, yeah, excellent split ring included with the light and already attached when you take it out of the box. That's another thing. You do get an actual box. So it's absolutely great for gift giving. But... Here we come to the very first issue. Now, you do have some instructions on here. This is obviously a twist to turn on, twist to turn off flashlight. Low mode, high mode, and off, if you can see that. This is a rechargeable light. And this particular one is a big improvement over the original 
in one particular way. Let me show you. Yep. Charge it through there. And you do have a light that lets you know when the light is charging and that light turns green when it's done charging. So what's the advantage? Well, it's spring-loaded. And there is no way that you can unscrew the head from the rest of the light, unlike the original. Now, you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, why the heck is that an advantage? That means that when the internal battery finally dies, I have to buy a brand new flashlight. I can't just unscrew the head and swap out the battery. Well, yes, that's true, but on a day-to-day -day basis, because the head does not unscrew, and it's actually spring-loaded, what that means is, and tubular flashlights like this one, or cylinder-shaped flashlights like this one, oftentimes you've got the light in a pocket with your keys. It's constantly rubbing against other items in your pocket, and the head will unscrew itself, and the battery falls out. Not good. Not good at all. And that used to be an issue on the original model. Again, this is the upgrade from the original model. So that issue has been completely eliminated. Now, yes, that means that when the internal battery finally gives up the ghost, this thing becomes useless. But on a day-to-day -day basis, it's an advantage as far as I'm concerned. I do, however, want to discuss the post that you see sticking up from this flashlight. Unfortunately, that is the biggest disadvantage of this light. The fact that you have a post like this, yeah, the inside of that post is hollowed out and a hole is cut from one end to the other to accommodate the split ring. This is a huge weak point. The more you carry the light, the more this metal split ring, which is actually stronger metal than the aluminum used here, with this being hollowed out on the very top, this split ring will eventually eat itself free from one side or the other. Now, sometimes that takes a couple of years, sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less. But if you carry this clip to the outside and you've got your keys attached to maybe a carabiner dangling from a belt loop, yeah, you might one day lose the flashlight, unfortunately. And every time I've reported this issue on my channel with other lights, I have gotten so many hate-filled comments from so many ignorant people. Honestly, I don't usually delete comments in my comment section, but I get so many ignorant people who are like, no, that can't ever possibly happen. Well, yes, it does. And usually those comments are pretty hate-filled. So those I do delete. It's simple, guys. If you post any racism in my comment section, I'm deleting it. 
if you post threats to me or one of my subscribers, I delete it. If you make hate-filled posts where you can't express yourself like a mature, intelligent human being, yeah, I delete it even if it's not racism. So there you go. If you find your comment deleted, those are the three reasons why. Now, unfortunately, there is a fourth reason that I have no control over, and I've spoken with other content creators, mostly in the ASMR community, because I do have an ASMR channel, Dauntless ASMR, if you guys want to check that out. But there is a fourth reason, got no control over. Sometimes YouTube just randomly eats comments and will delete comments on its own. That has nothing to do with me. So keep that in mind. Those are the four reasons why your comment gets deleted from my channels. And yeah, I've been in this hobby long enough to know that a post like this is a weak point. Here we have some very fine grooves that can get, yep, there's a little white dot of dust already. These love to catch dust and are very hard to clean. Very fine, very narrow grooves. Um, they help a little bit with grip. Not a ton, but they do help a little bit. Here's the body of the light and more very thin, shallow grooves. Here we have the LED. Now, this bezel is raised just a tiny bit above the lens. A very, very tiny bit. Do I think it'll offer the lens protection if you drop this on the ground? Yes, but it's going to be very limited. It's just barely above the lip of the lens. So please keep that in mind. But yeah, this is a very short, small, rather thin, rechargeable keychain light. It's about the same size as the original, but not in terms of thickness. In terms of thickness, it's just barely, barely a little bit thicker than the original. Not by much, not to the point where it becomes a pain carrying this in your pocket. So that's good at least. And the UI is particularly wonderful. Twist. And there's low mode. Now, if you keep twisting, there's high mode and there's my camera adjusting for the output. So, very simple UI, two modes. You got your low at 5 lumens. You got your high at 150 lumens. Again, at the emitter, not out the front. Very important. And this UI reminds me of a really underrated flashlight that came out quite a few years before this one did. The Night Core. EZ, the letters E and the letter Z, double A. The Nightcore EZ double A model. Fantastic double A powered flashlight, very same UI. So Olight copied an excellent UI with two very useful output levels. The problem with the Nightcore 
is that it wasn't the most reliable. Sometimes you would twist it and you would immediately get high mode when you wanted low and low was supposed to always switch on first. And then sometimes you would twist it a little too quickly. You wanted high mode, well, sorry, all you got was low. The user interface on that light just wasn't reliable. I mean, yes, the light would still turn on, but it wasn't always low, high, and then twist it all the way back for off. It was really a headache, especially when you wanted high mode, but the light was like, nope, here's low. So Olight definitely improved that particular aspect on the Nightcore Easy AA, which has been discontinued for years now, unfortunately. Now, as far as the beam, what you get is an intense, very bright, and very wide hotspot. Beyond the hotspot, practically zero spill. So please keep that in mind. You get a very wide, very intense hotspot with practically zero side spill. And on my particular example, unfortunately, there is just a hint of a blue tint. Now, that can be forgiven considering the price. You can usually find this guy for around $16 to $18, which is nice. And you get a lot of flashlight for that much money. This is a really excellent keychain light, considering the price. Aluminum alloy, construction. It's a personal favorite, even with this post. And yes, I do have a little bit of black ink on my index finger. Please forgive that. I do like fountain pens. So yeah, despite this one annoying, aggravating issue, that is a huge weak spot. Considering how much this little guy costs, how little room he takes up on a keychain, and I mean, you're getting something with really impressive output. Yes, I know. There are keychain lights out there, a little bit bigger, just a little bit, that put out massive amounts of lumens. But think about it. For a keychain light, as soon as you turn it on, you get five lumens, which is extremely useful for most tasks that most people would expect a keychain light to be able to do. I mean, five lumens, yeah, not very impressive. For a keychain light, that's about average. That's a good amount of lumens for a keychain light. Again, runtime on low, six hours. And in case something happens, maybe your main flashlight, oh no, the batteries died. What do I do? I need a good amount of light right now. Well, you've got it. Turn the head some more, 150 lumens until you can get your main flashlight sorted out. But yeah, overall, even with that weak post on top, this is a really excellent small keychain light. I highly recommend it, and I also recommend going to eBay and getting yourself one of these one-inch lobster claw clips. You can get them from a variety of vendors on eBay, so that shouldn't be a problem. Nice variety of vendors on there. But yeah, really makes this a lot more useful, because if you need light, you just unclip it 
from your main keychain. Absolutely excellent add-on. And again, not a very expensive flashlight. With Christmas approaching, these would make good little stocking stuffers. I think they would. All right, guys, that's it for today. Please stay safe out there. Unfortunately, it's still dangerous. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.